So, you might notice I'm not in my classroom. Mrs. Croft is teaching you from her house. Um, today I'm going to do a quick little art lesson with you guys. And some of the best parts of this art lesson are that we are going to be learning about making lines, using the space on our paper, and creating patterns. So we're going to learn about repeating a line and a shape so that we can create patterns inside a rhino on a piece of paper. Now I know that we might not all have the um, supplies that we need at home, so this is actually a really flexible lesson. Um, some of the things that you're gonna need a piece of paper, any kind of paper, honestly. Um, this is just white construction paper, but we could also use notebook paper. We could use um, computer paper. If you have paper and you can find it, it will work. After you find your paper, um, you can use a lot of different modes for making your art. So what I'm going to be using, because these are some of the items that I have at home, are one black crayon, so just a simple black crayon, and then um, one of our handy dandy little watercolor palettes. However, if you don't have a watercolor palette, that's okay. You can totally do this project with markers. So instead of using the black crayon, I would maybe use a black marker, or you could use colored pencils, or you could also just use crayons. So this is a very flexible um, art project, and the goal behind it is just to get us creating and having some creative time because we don't want all of our time at home to be learning and schooling, and we can really learn a lot through art. So. I'm going to get ready to get started and I'll see you again in a second. Okay, so to start with, you want to find the right corner of your paper. So for me, I just have this regular white piece of paper. The right corner is going to be right here. I'm going to start by drawing a big U in the right corner and this is going to be where we put the rhino's face. So I just made my U like that. Now I'm going to make a little dot right here and a little dot right here, and I'm gonna connect my dots together with a slightly curved line to make it kind of look like one of those half moons. We would call it a crescent shape that you may or may not have seen in the sky before. Now we're gonna give our rhino a name, or not a name, a face. You can give him a name if you want to. So when I give him a face, um, I'm gonna start by drawing a curved line right here. And this is for that horn that he has at the end of his nose. Then I'm gonna give him a cute little smiley face because I have a, ha a happy rhino, an eyeball, kind of right in the middle of his head. So right here is where I'm gonna give him an eyeball so he can see. And with my eyeball, I'm gonna give him a lot of black so he can he can see good like that. Um and then a couple of ears at the top. And when you draw ears, they pretty much look like two leaves. So you kind of draw one like that, another like that, and then give it a middle like that. So this is what my rhino's face looks like. My rhino kind of has a skinnier face. So I'm then going to start creating his body and when I create his body, I'm going to start up here where the ears connect to the head. And I'm just going to do like a slight curved line. And I want to kind of think about where he is on the paper. So he's not, his body's not way bigger than his head. So I'm thinking that this is about pretty good for the top of his body. And now I'm going to start curving it into his rear end and where his leg would be. So right there. I'm also going to give him another horn in the middle of his head because rhinos usually have that other horn right there too. Ta-da! All right, and now rhinos also have four legs. And these are pretty easy legs. They're just going to be um, basically four rectangles. But what I'm gonna do first is I know I want my legs to end 
about right here. So you kind of pick a spot between the mouth and the eye and just sort of make that a straight line down that goes with this other straight line right here. So now I know his first leg will start there and his last leg will start here. So I'm just gonna make four legs. One, two, three, and the last one, four. Ta-da, there's my rhino's legs. All right, then we're just gonna put a couple of finishing touches on our rhino. When we do that, we're gonna give him a tail. So right here, we are gonna draw one line and another line and kind of make it connect in a point like that. And then you're gonna give it some little hairs like that because they kind of have a hairy tail like an elephant. And then the last thing is that each leg is gonna get three toenails. So I'm just gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. There, and I have now finished drawing my rhino. Okay, so now we're gonna start the fun part and that is adding patterns to our rhino. So the first thing we have to do is break up this rhino body with some different lines. So what I'm gonna start with first is I'm just gonna draw one straight line kind of in the middle of my rhino's body to break him in half, just like that. For the next line, I'm going to start at the edge right here, actually right here, and I'm gonna make that connect to the face, kind of like a, a diagonal line. So now I have one, two, three big parts. Then I'm gonna break this in half and just go whoop, like that. I'm trying to make dark lines with my crayon. Um, and then I think I'm just gonna add a couple of parts here too. One, two, I'm gonna cut this in half. You get to decide. But each of these sections is going to have a different pattern. And that's what makes this a lot of fun. So for example, um, this part right here, I'm gonna add one more right there. I'm gonna just do some lines. So here's my pattern. There. So some lines like that. And then over here, I'm gonna do some swirls. Check this out. Swirl like a cat, or not a caterpillar, a, um, a snail, like a snail's shell. Swirl, swirl. Perfect, okay, then I think I'm gonna make some spots. Some spotty spots like this. There. I think I'll make some more lines, but instead of going up and down, I'm gonna go sideways. One, two. Um, I think I'll do some crosses, like watch, I'm gonna make lines this way and this way, but then I'm also gonna make lines this way. So like I'm making little squares like a tic-tac-toe. Um, you can make stars or snowflakes, however you wanna call them. This is the easy star, huh? Some of us know how to make those other stars. That would be fine too. Maybe I'll do that for the next one. Maybe over here I'll make those other stars. Watch it. One more. Um, I'm gonna do scallops, which is just making like little C's and connecting the things. Just lots of different Patterns. 
Um, for the rhino's horn, I'm gonna make zigzags. Um, gonna give him some polka dots up here on this horn, I think. There we go. What else could I do? Ooh, how about just a squiggly line like this? Like waves in an ocean. All right, and I think that's about all of the patterns I'm gonna put. The only place I didn't put a pattern was right here for his face. Um, and next we're gonna talk about how we color it in. Okay, time for the fun part. Now we get to color our rhino. Like I said, there are some different ways to do it. I'm gonna show you all the different ways. To begin with though, I'm gonna start with a watercolor. Um, now we get to decide whatever colors we want our rhino to be. I'm just gonna do each section a different color, but some of the sections can be the same. So if you're using watercolor, remember before you start painting, you always put a couple of drops of water in the little paint palettes to make sure that they um, are ready for when you paint and that you're not scraping that watercolor out. You get your brush nice and wet, and then you get the fun part of picking your color. So I think I'm gonna do purple first, because that's one of my favorite colors, and I'm gonna give this guy a fun purple head. So check that out. Just like that. Remember, when you watercolor, water is important, obviously, so you wanna make sure that your brush is wet enough to spread that paint nicely. All right, so I did his head purple. Now I think I'm going to do some of the sections in his body a bright yellow because I love the way yellow and purple look together. So over here, I'm going to do this one yellow like that. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that pretty against the black? That's what we call contrast. So we already did lines. We did patterns when we made our different shapes inside each of the parts of our rhino and now we're creating contrast by painting over the black and making the black go pop with the color be on top of it. <clears throat> uh, I think I'll just do a couple more yellow actually. I'm gonna give him some yellow toenails down here and then I think I will also make this part yellow. There. Now, I just wanna show you how you could also use um, markers if you have markers at home. So, um, if I did that, I could just pick any marker color I wanted. And I'm gonna pick a pink fuchsia -y color. And I'm going to make that, this part that. And it will still um, create a good contrast with the black behind it, which looks pretty cool. This marker's almost dead, but I can still squeeze out some of that color, hopefully. And then what a lot of people don't know, if you have some juicy markers like this, if you have a paintbrush and a little bit of water and you kind of spread it, it actually kind of gives it a watercolor look that you may not have had before. So that's kind of fun too. So you could do that if you wanted, if mom and dad or your grownups don't really want you to be painting, painting. Um, I think I'll make this part of his leg a bright pink. Voila.
And here is my final masterpiece, all done and ready to go.